Okay. So this is a 1v1 hideout game at mid-elo, but these players might be offended by being looped in with the other people I have looped into mid-elo. I say mid-elo is 1,000 to 1,600. 1,550 is pretty freaking high, though. You're making some things happen if you're at 1,550. You've got some skills. You've got some quality play. So in the red, we have Nicholas uh, playing as the Poles. Quick look at Nick's profile, and Nick has played with the Poles before. Uh, seems to play a mix of maps, like Arabia and then more closed maps like Hideout. Uh, same with Babelbox, but I think Babelbox seems to be the player that prefers the closed maps more than Nick. So I'm guessing maybe one of these players, and I should have introduced Babelbox, sorry, Babelbox is over here. Um, I feel like one of these players maybe favorited Arabia, other player favorited Arena, one super open, one super closed, and Hideout is kind of in the middle. So, Bohemians and Poles, I always forget if they came from the same expansion, but they came around the same time, and, okay, yeah, please replace that lumber camp. Thank you, Blue. Um, but both of these civilizations are very, very good on closed maps. They're probably both top five on Arena. I don't necessarily have a, a hideout tier list in my brain, but they've got to be up there as well for a map like hideout, and they have a lot of bonuses that apply. Um, so, we'll see. You know, the Poles, uh, they are very good Tower Rush civilization. Um, also, are there any nerfs to the Poles at all in uh, this patch? There was a patch yesterday. I don't think there was, right? Uh, the Poles are great booming civilization. The Poles are great spamming civilization. But I would say that the thing for me is I'd be very scared of the gunpowder Bohemians. I'd also be very scared of their uh, halberdiers doing additional bonus damage. So... And while the spam is good with poles, you don't want to be spamming into a choke point against that death ball from the Bohemians later on. I guess in some ways, I mean, Bohemian player might want to play more defensive, make the game go late, go for the death ball. But also it's tricky because the poles could always raid you from all sides. So we'll see. Well, so far, so good. Um, no real indicators right just yet on what they're going to go for. Uh, I think red will likely go for fast castle play because of the four on wood. Players just pushing in their deer for food at the moment. And their build orders look pretty decent thus far. Fantastic introduction he is here. Well, if I do my best introduction every single time, then it just gets boring, right? So any mistake that I make is just to make the good things that I do seem great later on. Um, that's... That's my strategy with life as a whole. <laughs> or so I tell myself. Where's 1550 in the grand scheme of things with world rankings? If I had to guess, it's like maybe top 3,000? Maybe even top 2,000? Someone would have the check, but that's like at the level where you could maybe brag to your mom about it and she wouldn't completely hate you. Right? Not hate. Hate's a strong word, but... Like, yeah, but ma yeah, mom, I might have missed school today, but I'm top 3,000. No, that wouldn't work. I think you say top 100. Like, my mom wouldn't have cared. But yeah, like, it, it, there's a big gap between the top couple hundred and 1550 because there's just such high, high tiers to our game, but 1550 is definitely something that... Uh, is a solid enough level where you should be looking out for them. All right, here we have a barracks now for Red. Now, Red's about to get housed, so Mom's definitely not going to be proud about this one. Red's like, crap, I forgot to make a house. But okay, I'll get Loom now. I'd be thrilled with 1550. Hey, we're not talking about money. I don't think. Is it, are other people getting a dollar per ELO out there? I never heard about that. I still am not completely sure what the plan was. Like, I think what Red wanted to do is go Man at Arm Tower. But Red was a little late to the stone. You do get some gold income when you mine stone with this Civ. Mm. Okay, and then Blue is going Fast Castle. Whoa, but like, this is going to be really Fast Castle. Three farms normally indicates Fast Castle. 
But then again, we don't have any gold being mined. Okay, I have no clue. I have absolutely no clue. I'm top 30,000 right now. I might brag to my mom about it. I mean, just think of what percentage that puts you at in the world. There's a lot of people on the planet. Go ahead and brag. All right, here are the militia for red. Uh, Blue's going to take the stone and the gold here. So I'm beginning to get excited because the pressure is going to come in. But blue should be able to defend with some towers, possibly. I just got 900 elo for the first time yesterday, and I'm proud of that. You should be. 900's not easy to get. Like, I, I know it's... I still don't believe that's that's below average. I guess for people who play ranked 1v1s, technically, that's like at average these days. Or maybe slightly below average. But for every person who plays ranked games, you've got 100 more who are terrified of online play and maybe 50 more who are playing online but not playing ranked. Okay, so here comes the pressure. Blue is going to drop a market. And that's going to block that gate off. And that's a really good decision there because Blue wants a blacksmith market anyways for a fast castle. Blue, however, is also getting loom. Um, and didn't send a lot of vills on gold. So it doesn't have the gold yet to go up. Blacksmiths with the Bohemians are also very cheap. So Blue could be building the blacksmith as well, even with only 80-some wood. But I think now the pressure's really mounting. And this is what this rush can do to close map players. And Blue says, okay, we'll build houses like this. We'll drop our own tower. Red's trying to get in. And Red says, well, that's not going to work. Or Red just drop another tower. Yep, perfect. This is so good from Red. And then with the pulls, and he there's a reason he made his houses here, because you never want to farm around your TC. Then his food eco can spike behind this. Because he can start to farm when he finds a time around his mill. Good repairing here from Blue though. Blue's gonna garrison with these villagers. Red might end up needing to leave this area. Okay. Fast Castle definitely has been delayed, and we now have a barracks from Blue. And and I would consider this successful already if I were in Red's position, because you're not necessarily trying to, to like, kill the person. But if you can delay their whole build order and do things and force things like this, it's going to be awesome for you. Just think of how much work it takes for Blue to keep things going right now. Like that barracks is also hugely questionable. Red in and out of the tower. Repair, hop in. And, okay, are we going to see a GG here? House? Ah! What are you? Uh. Awkward. <laughs> no, this game had so much potential. Red just crushing him. Yeah, great, great job from Red. This is going to be awesome next to the tower as well, I think. Red blocking the vill. Um, kind of. Nice, and go right to the tower, Red. Oh, yeah, Red won this game. This is over. Really good strategy. It, when in doubt on this map, just go man at arm tower. And also, with poles, I think it's always a good strategy. We'll see. Blue's not ready to give it up yet. Blue's placed a tower here. And Blue's now kind of walling in towards the TC. Um... That said, like, more towers are going to be needed. Blue, you really need a blacksmith. I think Blue forgot that blacksmiths are cheap with the Bohemians. Okay, there's the blacksmith. Right. Funnily enough, Blue will have the resources to go Castle Age. And Blue will likely be able to drop a castle. The crazy comebacks are possible when you're a clown. When you, especially with uh, with Bohemians, if you use the market, because they get so much stone and gold with the mining upgrades being free. Oh, man at arms are running through. Okay, one of them's gonna go down. And there goes blue. So there is a chance. Now for red, you're like, wow, I've killed a villager. Now I just need to macro well by farming around my full work. You see more full works for red. Um. This, this tower here could kill the farmers. It does kill a farmer there. Also, the man-at-arms are through. Oh, God. Yeah, so it's now three villagers dead. I'm just going to drop another tower. Blue doesn't realize this tower isn't completed yet. 
uh, or does and just hasn't finished it because times are sad, times are rough. Red's been all over him. Dang. I'd love for there to be a chance for blue, but it's unlikely. I think red is executed well enough where this should be a victory. Now, if you want to be extra safe, what you can do is you can stonewall this. I would always recommend it. Just stonewall that side after your tower rush in red's position. Oh, God. 99%. 99% up. Okay. Now it just gets shot down, but... Um... Also, you never want to farm here for your blues. You're going to want to farm over here. Yeah, even without red stonewalling, I think red will, will likely be able to defend against any pressure that could eventually make its way here. All right. Um, I saw the Facebook gaming app is going away. Yeah, the, the regular app will still be there, but the, the gaming app is apparently going away in October. I found that out today. It's funny, they, they messaged me. They were like, no, don't boom. No, Babble Box. Uh, Babble Box, don't boom. You're dead already. Like, you've lost six villagers and your eco's in ruins. I don't think adding the second town center is necessarily the play. I think trying to punch back as quickly as possible would be the play. Yeah, I saw an article about it. I haven't actually confirmed anything like that there, but... Let's see... I mean, I guess the castle's not going to be that late. And this would give you two minutes to produce two uh, villagers out of two TCs. I would go castle here, right? Because, like, your castle here would clear up these three towers, and then you can make your unique unit. Oh, yeah! Yes! I love it! This is why I want to do mid-elo clowny maps, because you have crazy stuff. So, honestly, I'm liking Blue's position a little bit more. And a lot more if the castle goes up. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I think it's not sneaky enough. <laughs> the 2TC play is definitely proving me wrong a little bit. But that castle, man. Oh, man. Okay, so let's look at Red's point of view real quick. The red has added a stable, and red's adding a scout. Ooh. Okay. Red didn't mine any gold this game. It's fascinating. There's a scout for blue. Now, blue also added a uh, monastery. I assume to get fervor, which makes the villagers faster, or sanctity, which makes the villagers get more HP. Just to reiterate, that only applies to the villagers... And the monks for the bohemians. And let's see if red patrols this. Or just clicked it over. Okay, that is a click. Oh my goodness. Shh. <laughs> Don't say a word. <laughs> no way. And Blue's doing the right thing to prep some houses as well. Oh, and Red's like, I'm a genius. Now I can boom and my opponent's dead. Oh, man. I love it. Okay, Red noticed now. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Red noticed. Blue didn't fully wall this. There was a hole there. There's another scout on the way. That's at 60%. Still don't know if two... Nice quick wall. I still don't know if uh, two scouts is going to be enough. Yeah, and actually no villagers die in the process. Oh, dang. So it's 43 villagers for blue, who's still being tower rushed, which is kind of crazy. But this castle's in an awesome spot. It denies farms. And now I'll, the big question is, what do you even make if you're in red's position? Normally you want to make knights, or normally you want to make uh, the Obuk, which is the unique unit. But... Not going to be so easy to do either of those things right now. Red's thinking maybe skirmishers or something out of the archer range, but blue. What a beast. Babble box over here. Um, it, it has the lead right now despite losing eight villagers. So yeah, this is probably the right play. Just chop wood there. I uh, would love to see a couple of the Hussite wagons made. Uh, the wagons are very awkward to deal with. Like, there's no, like, true counter, per se. 
But we're going to see barracks instead. I guess the barracks is because blue doesn't know what the opponent's doing and knows that the poles are known for spamming knights. But it seems a little reactionary. Also, blue just, like, is allowing this to happen. And uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What the? What was that? He meant to go siege workshop, right? <laughs> Guys, blue's not going to be able to take wood pretty soon. <laughs> Blue's just like, let's add another TC. So I think, like, what higher elo does there is they add a house here with three bills, and then they send, like, eight to rush this down, and then these bills get trapped, and then you, you know, you can deal with it. But, I mean, to be fair to Blue, Blue could be thinking Siege and Pike Push to kill um, Red's economy. Red has done the right thing, though, to get to this stone, and if you're in Red's shoes, you just drop a castle right here right here and you should be fine and that pressure doesn't do anything to you. the fact like that blue dropped the castle was epic the fact that blue didn't add anything out of the castle immediately is not so epic but again the way you make sure if you're ever in red's position because the way red played this was good early on the way you make sure that you win the game or at least have a, a good lead is you just stonewall after you do your rush or towers here does anyone know if poles get guard tower? I'm going to assume they do because most civs don't. Uh, sorry, most civs do, but I know that some civs do not. Okay. Uh, you have the scout. Killing the scout from red. Good work there. 66 villas versus 62. Uh, we will have one relic collected here for blue. Uh, you would think. Red really wants this gold, I guess. Again, that's just such an easy castle to place if blue doesn't have anything. The Hussite wagon's really good. Like, it's really awkward to defend. It's got solid attack, and it's really tanky, and you can't convert it unless you go for redemption. And Red's just going to have such an easy job here. These pikemen just look so useless right now. Red continues to creep around with towers. Look how many towers are here. This is ridiculous. Eight towers, plus some siege, possibly. And I'm beginning to lose faith in Blue's... Not Blue's gameplay here, but Blue's chances. I mean, having 30-some farmers is certainly not anything to... Uh... I, I think that's part of it, actually. I think that for Blue, Blue's spending so much time focusing on the boom... Is that blue hasn't really thought as much about how do I push. No, I don't think the forward castle was a waste of stone. But you could make arguments that it would have been more effective to clear up your own base with a castle. Unless you're talking about red wasting stone, in which case, I don't necessarily agree. Because mining stone with poles gives you so much gold anyways, and there's guard tower. Um, it's like never a bad idea to take a lot of stone with poles, you're always going to have extra resources because of it. Beautiful farms. Yeah, guard tower is perfect. Siege push is perfect. Another TC now for blue, but like, what, what do you build up towards here? You're just losing grounds. You've got no way to push now. And red could even click up to the Imperial Age soon. Now, I, I like the guard tower play. I think like, Advancing in here with towers, you could argue, is a bit much. But overall, I think it's been pretty good here. I don't have any complaints with how red played this besides not walling up the sides. And yeah, we got a castle from blue, and which is the correct play. Because you want to stop the siege push from advancing. But if your opponent's in the Imperial Age, that means you're going to lose your castle on the front. And Red should have a pretty big lead because of this. Always a chance, though. Um, you know, 20 villager lead. 38 on food. There's still gold back here. There's still gold here. And still take most of your resources except for what was over on this side. And also, your opponent will usually go into cavalry... And if they go into cavalry and you're the Bohemians, you do more bonus damage with your Spearman line, so. 
and in theory, but I think you've got to rush Imp here. And yeah, this is a really good game. Like, by the time Red makes it to Imp, Red is going to be 30 vils behind. Because Blue has four TCs creating villagers all the time. Red has only had two because one of those TCs is the Imp TC. Also, no relics collected yet. I have that stuff all in the same panel now. As I say, that blue will get one. Blue really needs to chill out with the Vil production for a second and get up to the Imperial Age. You can give up this area and you can be okay with it. But I think, as I said before, I think you wall it if you feel you're going to lose that area. Still going to take so much work for blue to ever push back these towers. And there goes blue on the way to the Imperial Age. Um, T90, did you find out they fixed the spectator crap? I did. I did see that, yes. That's a really good change. I'm really happy they did. Um, and I appreciated them working with me. I complained about that so many times, and I told them my theories so many different times, and I appreciate them actually checking that and finally figuring it out. I was excited to hear that they had that fixed. Okay, uh, reds. The original four villagers are just just sneaking. It's a very small little army, but it's not really an army. It's four villagers and a mangonel. It's like a joke punt. It's like the start of a joke. Now three villagers have remained. Uh, we do have a treb here. Now I know I say don't trickle treb, but if your opponent doesn't have knights or anything, you just go for the castle right away here. A red being a little patient and might finally lose some of this here. But might also take out this TC. There goes red with the traps. Okay. Right now, red's going Olbuk because his opponent's going Pikeman, which is a smart uh, decision. And look at how much food is there, man. Like, red could always go into so many different things. Could have gone into Arbalest, could spam Lycav. Uh, was my theory right? Yes, my theory was right. My theory was... So it's a quick pause, unpause. But the person who unpauses it is not the person who paused it. And I had seen it happen in enough instances where I just kept saying, like, this is... I'm pretty sure this is it. And they eventually reproduced the issue. Um, so yeah, that, that was my theory. Now, I think there might have been, like, some other... There were probably like some other small details with how it was happening that they ended up finding, but that's at least what I had said. And they said that that was it, so. Yeah, I mean, blue is 140 villagers, but 20 army, and that 20 army can get countered by the elite over. Also, um, thank you, John. Nice to see these messages pop up. Appreciate the, uh, the 10 months. D Benz has found you right after my first son was born nearly three years ago. Just got home from the hospital with my second son today. Thanks for all the content, man. Wow. I didn't know Sully was born three years ago, but I guess that explains his maturity. Thank you. Three years has flown, man. I mean, eight years has flown. <laughs> my whole life has flown. I'm so old. Oh. More barracks now. Okay, so this is more like it for Blue. Blue's like, I'm pushed back into a corner. So let's get the production rolling here. Chemistry could have been researched in Castle Age, but better late than never, right? And so now you've got to be thinking hand cannons. So how hand cannon, how hand cannon. If you're red, you've already put your opponent into like a corner. I think you just prep stables and you just raid this guy incessantly from all the sides and not even worry about the KD situation. Um... You could go for a more structured push and be real cute and pretty about it and go for like six ranges and make a tech switch into range units. I personally say screw that. Just spam from all the corners, right? Because you, you've got three corners of the map secured. Kind of. I mean, blue is over here. This is something you should probably stop. Anyways, uh, wouldn't it have been something if red would have taken out this university? Oh, man. Instead of the range, that would have been crazy. But chemistry will complete just in time. And the resources are still there for our blue player. 
There's still gold to be mined. There's now stone being mined. Yeah, red does a great job to get positions, but doesn't do the small things to hold the positions, like walling and outposting. Blue actually has the lead right now. Has one relic collected. Like, has the lead in some ways and not in others. Yeah, has a relic. Could get this relic. Could maybe get this relic. And I think we'll have the better army composition pretty soon, but you do have red now with the winged hussars. Now, guys, one of the weirdest bonuses in our game that I didn't hear about until last week. You ready? Winged hussars have a bonus against gunpowder. I don't even know what it is. I don't know if it's like plus one or plus 18 or what. They have a bonus against gunpowder. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's very random. Um... And I didn't know about it until last week. The winged hussars are going to loop over to the right side now from red. Um, <clears throat> red didn't have a gate, so red had to delete the house. Red does see this and could deny this. It's a great job from blue to sneak over here and try and lock this position down with the castle, but these hussars are going to deny it. Meanwhile, red has continued to advance in here. Hand cannon how combination is very strong, but this is perfect. And you do not have to be too worried about losing these units. They're just freebies. They do a ton of damage as well, especially with the unique tech, which does a little bit of trample damage. And this is the bread and butter for the poles. And at arm tower rush into a big boom. And then infantry cav spam. And then there are the ranges as well. Very, very well played from red. I think blue, um, blue honestly just, I would have liked to see what happened in this game if blue didn't let the man at arms and the scout in. I think that brain fart there really held blue back. Blue could maybe make some cannons, maybe bombard cannons to push some of the towers back, but then it's like, you only have so much gold and you've got to think that the, some hussars are going to snipe those bombard cannons. Might be able to sneak over there and finish this castle, though. Red's just going to steal some of this stone. There's a lot of stone over here to take. And just keep grinding your opponent down with waves of raids if you're red. It's overall, I think, a pretty perfect play here from red. And blue just seems a little too fixated on the boom. Trying to clear up the raids constantly. But that, these raids should really never end with the positioning that Red has. Send your hand cannons to one side, and then suddenly you've got the winged hussars on the other side. Uh, historically accurate since Polish hussars expelled Ottoman Empire from Europe. Yeah, I, I didn't know the specifics, to be completely honest, because I'm not the biggest history buff. But I was told that it was historically accurate, so... Now we have the Hussite wagons. Yeah, I think that would have been the what changed the game, right? Like, the way Red's eco looks right now only looks like this because Blue didn't immediately make Hussite wagons. I don't think Red would have really known what to do if there would have been wagon spam from that forward castle. Look at the gold count, man. Ah, uh, I was surprised that the poles weren't nerfed with the most recent patch. I, they definitely will be nerfed. Like, something about them is going to have to tweak at some point. Um, some people think that they shouldn't get as much gold when they mine stone. Like, maybe take it to 25% or 20%. Um, I, I'd i never want the farming touched, and I really like the unique text, but I think maybe the unique tech could have a slight tweak. Like, maybe knights being 60% off is a little too much. Maybe being, like, 40% would still be enough. Um, I really like the Polish civilization. But yeah, with some of the other tweaks that happened in this patch, and it's not like... Like, it's not like the, the previous patch, which was like a month or two ago. It was a long time ago. I was a little surprised to see uh, that there wasn't some type of change to the Poles. This is not to say that the Bohemians are a weak civ. The Bohemians have some insane strengths as well. Both of these civilizations do. Blue actually has the population lead right now and a massive army lead, but I don't know if that's going to mean too much here. If you don't have bomber cannons, you're not going to push your way out of this. 
I would definitely say that red... I guess red's going for bomber cannons and trips. But a red could consider mixing in some, uh, some cavalier. I think the archer range choice was good. I think making some arbalest uh, with that gold would be awesome. I don't know, guys. Blue is being super stubborn. Red still doesn't have any relics. Red still hasn't taken out this castle. Blue has 34 on food somehow. And is, is trying to push through this. But I, I, maybe blue thinks... Is there a chance that blue thinks these Hussite wagons are like bomber cannons? Because he's kind of using them as such. I know he's low on gold. Okay, red did not trickle trap. Was patient. Three trebuchets waited. Blue's building up barracks here to get some units against that, but that's just simply not going to cut it. So red can take this whole right side. Needs to try and hold the left side. Obviously still has tons of res right now. But will lose these bomber cannons here. I think red... Not long the sides. Not getting some of those relics. Um, th those are the types of things that like make a big difference at times. Like It could take you from 1550 to 1650 and 1750 in terms of consistency of decision making. Um, but I've... I've been really impressed with red overall here. And, and blue as well. Like, blue's never say die attitude is insane. But if I don't see blue make a bomber cannon soon, I might scream just like a little bit. Just like a, eh, a teensy bit. It's such an important thing to have right now. You gotta be, like, it can't take a long time because it's gonna take the other side of your base. It has to be quick. Unless red is gonna loop around, okay. Yeah, red realizes that that area is kind of lost, but not important. So red will just drop another castle here. Dropping more buildings just in case. This is poles for you. But, okay, so... So, from a game sense perspective... It is correct for blue to have to swing some army over here. Right, you, you do have to deal with this because you have so much that's important here. But you also have to be pushing with something. Because if it... You know, we saw it before. You swing over here, and then red's just going to swing right back over on the other side. In theory, anyways. We'll see if red actually does it. What's a unit that red should be making that red's not making a lot of right now, though? In fact, red hasn't made... Well, I don't want to spoil it, actually, but... What do you guys think? Obviously, spamming Cav is perfect with the pulls. I think you could consider three things, potentially. Um, I'd say the one thing, as people are probably going to come in with their guesses now, the one thing is Arbalest. Arbalest are significantly better against Halb and Hand Cannons than Skirms are because of the firing speed and the damage output. Yes, Skirms are also a really good bet, but if you have the gold, go for Arbs. Arbs would be awesome. Um, I think I would like Arbs more than I would like spending the gold on Cavalier because of the amount of Halbs. The other thing was is something he's doing now, which is Siege Ram. You could even consider Onager, truthfully. Yeah, all those things could work, but you don't have to. It's just going to take you a little bit longer to grind this guy down. One Hussar Raid does this, and it can end the whole game. Going down below 100 villagers right now is a really bad sign if you're blue. Yeah, and, and getting relics as well is, is definitely a big thing. But I guess he's got control over all of them still. Okay, these trebs are going to be taken out. So didn't protect the trebs there. Blue finally making a couple bombard cannons, but blue is officially out of gold. Except for that one relic. Blue with new TCs to add more villagers in mass. And the castle still stands for blue. Red still really doesn't want to spend the gold. Still sticking with the Hussars and the Skirms, which again is not bad. It's just not quite as effective. You could justify making some gold units here if you wanted, Red. <laughs>
Also, yeah, red could red could make multiple wonders and still win this game. The longer the game goes, though, the more I want red to lose for not getting the relics. I guess red didn't like know about all of them. Like, come on, man! You gotta get the relics. They're everywhere. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's one. And then I guess maybe he'll make another monastery somewhere. Blue pill just passing in chat. What's up? Hope you've been good, my friend. Better than blue, I hope. If you're backed into a corner at 155 pop with no hope of winning the game, I, I, I feel for you. Glad you could make it, though. <laughs> Come on, Red. You've got this. You've got this. Whoa! Oh, yeah, I remember your account was being weird last week. Oh, yeah, I saw his Emmy was in chat as well, so I don't know what happened with your accounts, but glad you're, you're back in business. Yep, and just like that, two Bomber Cannons have gone down, and now Blue's going to have to wait forever to be able to make two more Bomber Cannons. Red's going to make his own Bomber Cannons. Red's going to make Trebs. Red's going to go Trebs from this side now. Resign, Blue! Resign! Okay, do we see a GG from Blue? Yes or no, chat? I obviously hope the answer is yes, and the answer should always be yes. Don't be that guy that doesn't GG just because you're upset you lost. But what do you think? Blue has fought on for a long time. Now, that's not always, that's not necessarily associated with not calling the GG. But this is a stubborn player. I don't, I don't know what the win condition really is here. Unless you have bomber cannons. Red. Slowly move in with more siege over here. <clears throat> Any chance red might win this one? Uh, slight chance. I'd say at least a 1% chance. <laughs> Maybe slightly more than that. Uh, 7k gold at the moment for Red. Who is uh, going to get relic number 2. And maybe number 3 and maybe number 4. So. Another cannon just went down. And that was expensive. Another castle goes down now for Blue. Blue still says, I can't do this. Because I have faith. Red's gonna... Red, Red is slowly chipping away at Blue. It's methodical. It's... Very good. We'll have another castle on the hill. The skirms are taking care of most of the halbs coming in this way as more hussars come in. Over here, a little sloppy, but again, swinging back and forth is a little awkward. Do poles get heavy scorpion? I wouldn't recommend making heavy scorpion against the um, <clears throat> against the bohemians because they can make bombard cannons, but. If there's no bomber cannons, it would be awesome. But in theory, Heavy Scorpion should be a good addition. I just don't know if they get it. Okay, another castle from Red. I love how Red places a castle and still has 1,200 stone. <laughs> More Hussars into the back of Blue's eco. Blue still says, I can do this. <laughs> I mean, Blue's pop is pretty high, to be fair. 180 population is not normally a population you resign on. So if Blue's going by that, this will continue for a while longer. Yeah, he got the trample tech for his Hussars a while ago. Okay. Push continues from red. Slow, steady, methodical. Blue has most of the halberdiers inside of this back back area here because Blue's trying to keep the villagers alive and is still adding more villagers but the wood line's being raided Babble box it's time to resign man resign well Blue wasn't losing using his halves there because Blue probably sent them there to kill something and then forgot they were there or just didn't notice they were there right like there's gonna be a lot of ineffective army time because you're being when you're being raided like this your population's just not going to be where you want it all the time. Okay. Six Bombard Cannons uh, on the way, anyways, from Red. So it's going to take some time. Obviously, you'll be able to deal with this castle then. 
Blue's population is down now, now down to 140. Blue has 91 halberdiers with 33 more in queue. I really wish this game would have turned into... Uh, I, I think this game would have been different, and I wish it was different, with the wagons coming out of that forward castle from Blue. That would have been crazy. But overall, a good game. Red's now going to lock down the defenses on the sides, too. Stonewalling it up. Just in case. <laughs> what a comeback if Blue would actually win this. Like, usually, you can run into situations where players don't have as many relics or golds or stones. But it's been gold, stones, relics, and then also it's been wood. Like, Blue can barely take trees right now. Also, I don't know if poles get champion, but champion would also be decent. But I would go for the elite Obok instead because you have the castles. This castle will go down. Blue says, let's get some final armor upgrades for our archer line. Because we still have a chance. Blue has probably been texted by his buddy that I'm casting this game. And Blue's like, well, we don't want him to put it on YouTube, do we? So let's just drag this out as long as possible. And the more we drag it out, the more boring T90 Wolf considered this game. I'm on to your strats here, Blue. I'm on to your strats. That strat will be ineffective, just like the forward castle drop was. <laughs> now, Blue's played a good game. And the population's still high, and Blue finally calls the GG. At one hour and 10 minutes, but let's review for a second, okay? So, I think Red's strategy was sound. I think for Blue, what made everything get crazy was the units getting in here, which is disappointing for Blue because I think Blue's strategy of defensive tower, defensive tower, fast castle would have worked. Um, the castle age got delayed by Blue, but wasn't really sure what to do. I didn't think Blue had an opportunity, but then the forward castle happened and suddenly everything changed. So at this stage of the game, you've got 58 vills, okay? Versus 56. Actually, what time did the castle actually go up? Right about here. 24 minutes. You see what Red did though? Red said, uh, what do I do? Let's go archer range. That archer range would not have been helpful. At least not immediately. What do I do? I need farms. Boom, farms. Those farms are not going to stay up if there's pressure here. I think if Blue makes Hussite wagons, which only cost wood and gold, I don't know the exact cost on them, but it's certainly there. And Blue's got even just like five to six Hussite wagons. Red can't farm here. Red has to work harder in this game. Red has a boom that's worse and then doesn't make it to the Imperial Age at the same time that he did. Doesn't get to do X, Y, Z, all these things that could resolve from that. So the forward castle's great. But I always say two things with forward castles. This should apply to most ELO. Forward castle is either to A, immediately deny an important resource, or to B, bring an immediate position which allows you to push. Ideally, it's all of the above. If you could castle drop someone's gold and then immediately push from it, that's obviously ideal. But got to be one or the other. It wasn't one or the other there for blue. Uh, though I guess like maybe this farm space was important. But it was still a really good play. And I think that's something that Blue could easily... Whoops. I think that's something that Blue could easily change as a player. And that's more of like uh, game sense stuff. Um, there were some executional errors earlier in the game from Blue, but that was just because Red's aggression was so good. 605 kills, 466 deaths. You had 140,000 resources collected. I mean, Red didn't even spend the majority of that. Red was really chilling for retirement there. Again, a good game. Uh, Mid-ELO stuff, castle drops, tower rushes, all that stuff's awesome for me. I like it.